You know, let me just uh, check here real quick. Uh, global warming is still being called global warming, right? And not America warming? I, I'm sorry for the confusion, but after reading the stories and watching what happened at the conference in Bali last week, I, I wasn't sure anymore. I mean, after all, if you listen to our media, the conference was basically about how big bad America just tried to hold the rest of the world hostage on climate change until they all ganged up on us and we finally said, Uncle! But if you read the overseas press, which happens to be far more fair on this issue, you realize that the U.S. only compromised after developing countries like Brazil and South America finally agreed that they would cut their emissions as well. Well, that of course has been one of the major roadblocks to the U.S. becoming part of any major initiative. So it was convenient that the media pretty much ignored the change of heart. And as for that so-called huge about faith with the U.S., the reality is we agreed to agree to meet in 2009 to think about a new agreement. And, and people say the U.N. doesn't get stuff done. Chris Horner is the author of the Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming and Environmentalism. Chris, this is one of the most, this one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. Uh, first of all, we're going to agree to agree to meet sometime in the future. Um, and it sounds like a comedy show, unless you hear Al Gore give that speech where he just chastises us and says, in two years, things will be different, and you'll have us then. Mm -hmm. Please tell me that you don't think that's true. Please. Uh, I don't think it's true for the following reasons. We remember history as much as Mr. Gore is trying to revise it. When he gave his PowerPoint presentation before a group I attend in Washington on Wednesdays, he said essentially the same thing, and I challenged him and reminded him that it was it's true, the Clinton administration did agree to Kyoto, and they did sign it, though our media can't seem to get that right. Bush never unsigned it. He said mean things about it. That doesn't matter. They signed it on November 12, 1998, which is all the permission the Senate needs under our Constitution. Read Article 2, Section 2, and Article 1, Section 5. So the Senate could vote on these things, and Gore knows this. And you'll notice that no senator, including those who see a president in the mirror when they shave in the morning, has tried to move Kyoto through the Foreign Relations Committee or to the floor. Okay, does that I include Hillary? Does, does so she shave? Words, I'm sorry? I <laughs> does that include Hillary? Does she, I mean, she, she shaves her legs, I'm just saying. Um, now who's being I can see her in there. Give me a pack of cool cigarettes, will you? Um, okay. Yeah, in, in the white, in the white uh, muscle t-shirt. I see yes. it too. Is she, Let's is she, move on. Yes. Is she, is she somebody that will... Because uh, quite honestly, I am really petrified because I believe this is a move to global socialism and one world government it's not about anything but taxes and empowering the UN and any any president that says hey I'm all for that is the last one I want do you think Hillary Clinton is in on that well the only reasons that would lead you to believe this is about taxation and global taxation and socialism is if you listen to the people pushing the treaty Jacques Chirac said that Margot Wallstrom who is the European Environment Commissioner said that. Uh, numerous of the NGOs who are, of course, sanctioned by the UN as by the fact that they get into these conferences say that. There were several panels discussing global taxation. The Swiss proposed it this time. Uh, there have been several runs at it at the UN. That's what this is about. It's about leveling the playing field for business, according to Wallstrom. Um, should we be worried? Yes and no. We, Hillary has said that she would sign the next Kyoto Treaty. Okay, that's cheap virtue for the following reasons. Again, her husband signed the first one, though the New York Times can't get that right. Actually, they, in the correction section, admitted that last November. <laughs> the Senate won't vote on it now, in the past, or in the future. So it's cheap virtue. Why don't we ask every senator running for office, not presidential candidates, would you vote to ratify to entangle us in this? And then we might actually have the honest discussion about what this treaty entails, that the global treaty involves 34 but, industrial titans like Slovenia and Slovakia, but not China, India, Mexico, and so on. But hang on, don't you think, Chris, that there are enough people that are just that will just go right down this highway because it is now the you know it's now the fashionable thing because of the media and beyond that you've got corporations like GE just breathing down the Senate's throat mm -hmm. everybody who picked at the carcasses of uh, Enron's subdivisions yeah. now up on the hill showing how responsible right. they are okay. please give me more subsidies and mandates Chris um, I, I've got to run I'm sorry I'm getting I don't a wrap. think we're gonna see this but we should have the debate thank you. thank you very much coming up next something so ridiculous that it's actually funny it is the top five